Roger should be coming through now. Okay, we're going to call the meeting to order. Um, this special meeting to approve some necessary waivers and exemptions uh, uh, that are required for us um, to ensure that our students and our, and our district is forward. So I'm going to recognize Dr. That, uh, first of all, uh, Board of Education, just want to say thank you. Uh, this is a, a special board meeting. The next regularly scheduled board meeting is next Tuesday night. Uh, so thank you for coming in. And for uh, Terry Michael, thank you for uh, joining us on the conference call. So we have all seven uh, members present, which is wonderful. Just going to mention a couple of things up front about the new format of our board meetings. Uh, first of all, health and well-being is going to be the top priority. Uh, you can see that we're obviously uh, practicing social distancing. Uh, we're going to record our Board of Education meetings uh, at the conclusion of each meeting. We will then post it on the district website, Board of Education page, also post it in board docs. So they're still going to be available to the public. Uh, we'll just do it through this new format, which has been approved by KASB moving forward. Uh, as far as public comments go, uh, for those of you that are on the conference line, if you could just state your name uh, as uh, just right before you make a comment, that would be perfect um, as we uh, take notes during the meeting. Um, and I think, oh, as far as uh, public comments go, uh, we also have on our web page, and when we post a meeting, uh, we clearly state that uh, we're certainly open for public comment. The way in which that would work under the current safety guidelines is uh, a patron of the community can simply send an email to me as the board clerk prior to the meeting, and then we'll make sure that we get that recorded uh, in the record. So, all right, thanks, Tom. All right, I just want to note for Michael and Tara and uh, for the minutes that I will call a roll today for our votes. Um, because we have people on the line, so we want to clearly make sure we have a, a, a clear record of that. Um, so we don't, did, I'll start down the agenda. Public comments. All right, roll call. And we'll call in person is Matt, Brian, myself, Jackie, and David. And on the phone are Michael and Tara. And I need approval of the agenda. A motion to approve the agenda. Second. We've heard the motion to approve the agenda as published. All those in favor? Uh, David? Aye. Brian? Aye. Aye. Tara? Aye. Michael? Aye. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, motion passes seven zero. Um, items for discussion: uh, the KSDE waiver application packet. Dr. McCoy. You bet. They give uh, KSDE a great deal of credit. Uh, since our schools have been closed for the uh, remainder of the school year, uh, they've been working uh, tirelessly, making sure that uh, we were able to keep up uh, with all the regulations, the guidelines, the requirements at both the state and the federal levels. They have a package together, a waiver uh, that every school district in the state must approve, basically broken down into three subsets. The first part of the waiver uh, talks about waiving hours for the required attendance of 1,116 hours. Uh, our school district uh, will be waiving 287 hours uh, to make the full uh, school year whole this particular year. I shared that with the board uh, late uh, last week. Assurances document, there are several things that are state requirements that we do have to continue moving forward, even though schools are closed for kids. That's the second part of this waiver. The third part, and in my opinion, the most important part of the waiver is the continuous learning plan. And so KSDE is a part of this waiver application as the continuous learning plan application. I give uh, Dr. Ann Matthews, the teaching and learning team, uh, numerous teacher leaders, department chairs, and our administrators in each of the buildings a great deal of credit. They have uh, just done a remarkable job in a very short period of time being able to put learning opportunities available for students. Uh, this is now coming in on the close of two weeks of learning opportunities. Um, hit a couple of bumps along the way, nothing major. And so the feedback we've received has been uh, far more positive than concerning. So again, a, a nice uh, pat on the back to uh, Dr. Matthews and many, many others that have put together a great package for our students that are moving forward. So, um, in summary, you know, that is the, uh, the packet of information included in the waiver. It does require board uh, president signature. It requires my signature. 
and then I will forward this information to KSDE later today or tomorrow. The due date is April 8th. Any questions? Michael or Tara, any questions? Uh, no, not for me. No. All right. Moving on. Okay, the uh, second uh, item for discussion, uh, 3.02, is class of uh, 2020 graduation requirements. So, uh, graduation requirements are covered in board policy. It's policy IHF. And in the policy that I have shared, it already, already has a statement in there that allows exceptions to be granted by the board to waive local graduation requirements that are in excess of the state minimum, which is 21 hours. To be a graduate of Washburn Rural High School in our school district locally, we have increased from 21 credits to 25 credits. Uh, what I bring uh, forth today for consideration for uh, approval for the board is for the graduating class this year only, 2020, is to expand the definition that we have in policy from just the Board of Education to also include me as superintendent of schools or my designee. The value of doing that is the high school administrative team as well as the counseling staff are looking at student by student by student in the a senior class, graduating class of 2020. There may be a situation through no fault of the students that because schools are closed through the rest of this quarter, that he or she may have making it up 24 credits and just couldn't quite finish the credit because schools were closed. We certainly want to err on the side of what's in the best interest for that student so he or she would be able to graduate on time. And so rather than taking every name back to you as a board meeting at upcoming board meetings, it would be more efficient and effective for the high school administrative team and me to partner so we can make those decisions on a case-by-case -case basis as we give them a review as they currently have been already doing at this part getting ready for graduation. And so that's the spirit or the intent of the uh, recommendation that we're seeking today. Any questions? All right. Uh, and the 3.03, the MOU. You bet. So I uh, reached out to um, AW NEA leadership, and it has been recommended uh, to create a memorandum of understanding uh, to explain modifications and also to just provide clarity on some things located in the 1920 negotiated agreement. And as a credit to AWNA leadership, they have uh, quite a few questions for members um, asking about salary, asking about health insurance benefits, asking about expectations on the duty day, and they provided uh, you know, fine answers. Uh, people are okay moving forward. But we also think there might be peace of mind just putting everything in the document. And so that is the purpose of the uh, MOU. And so this was a mutually written document uh, with us here uh, at the central office and also leadership of AWEDA. Uh, we've been working on this the last couple of days. And, uh, we uh, like uh, the content of the MOU right now for two reasons. Uh, one, there were a couple of modifications that we did need to address. Uh, the duty day, for example, looks differently. We are strongly encouraging our employees on the certified side to work from home as much as possible. Most of them are doing that, and that's to protect their health and well-being. Uh, but there are also things like, uh, as I mentioned earlier, salary benefits that we just want to make sure that our employees know that indeed they're going to be paid in full. And so uh, this document serves those two purposes. And so uh, we bring this to you for a recommendation of approval as well. Any questions? Um, all right, we will move on to action items and we will start with the uh, waiver application packet. Um, yes, uh, Mr. President, I would move that the Board of Education approve the KSDE waiver application packet as we discussed previously. All right, we have a motion by Brian and a second by Matt. Uh, we will take the roll on the vote. David? Aye. Brian? Aye. Jackie? Aye. Matt? Aye. Michael? Aye. Tara? Aye. I vote aye. So motion passes 7 0. Uh, moving on to the class of 2020 graduation requirements. Uh, 
Uh, Mr. President, I would move that the Board of Education approve the class of 2020 graduation requirements as discussed previously. Brian moves, Jackie seconds. David? Aye. Brian? Aye. Jackie? Aye. Matt? Aye. Tara? Aye. Michael? Aye. I don't die. Motion passes 7 0. And the memorandum of understanding. Uh, Mr. President, I would move that the Board of Education approve the memorandum of understanding as discussed. Thank you. Brian moves, Matt seconds. David? Aye. Brian? Aye. Jackie? Aye. Matt? Aye. Tara? Aye. Michael? Aye. I vote aye. The motion passes 7 0. Um, that concludes our business. I want to thank everybody for making the time available. Um, and I want to, I want our teachers to know we really appreciate all of our staff. We really appreciate all the hard work they're doing and taking on this challenge that uh, uh, has come about quickly. So um, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Matt? By David. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 7-0. Thank, Thank you all.